Hello guys, in today's video we are going to create a custom date range validator that will validate an input field based on the provided date range. So stay with me and see you in a couple of seconds. Here we have a project that we created a few videos ago. So if you haven't watched any of these, you can go back and watch them or you can just download the source code from the description of this video. So there will be a GitHub link in the description. Here we have uh, some validators that we created in the past videos. So each of these validators has its own video. And today we're going to create another validator for an input field that will be below this one. And the input field is going to be starting date, for example. So we want to validate the starting date when a user selects. So for example, a user has like 14 days or two weeks to select a specific date when they want to start running this subscription for example and then uh, our validator will validate the uh, range that the user selects actually so between the specific range okay so let's go back to the uh, studio code and uh, create our validator right click here on the validators so it is in, in the app shared validators new file and we'll name it date validator dot validator dot ts okay and now we are doing the following so uh, as this is the only function here in my validator i'll export it as default function in if you have any other in your files you don't have to do it like this but you can export them uh, separately so export default function Data range validator. So this date range validator is actually expecting two input dates. So our date range. So start date, that is type of date, and the end date, that is also type of date. Okay. So as this is a validator function, it has to be a type of validator function fn so hit enter and it will automatically import it from the angular forms and right now we have to open curly brackets here and we have to return something to this validator function so return and now we are having our input as when we call this date validator it gets the value from our control so we are getting an input here that is control and this is actually abstract control type abstract control and this abstract control abstract control and this actually validator function is returning validation errors or null so this depends is it valid or invalid okay and now we have to get the input date here so const input date is actually so we are creating a new date object here so new date and we are adding control dot value so this is our input date here okay and now i'm just missing this input date and this is complaining because we have to return something here. So just now I'll just return now. And later on we'll add proper validation checks. So the next one is we have to check if this input field is actually valid. So const valid equals input date. So our input date, it has to be greater or equal to start date and both of these checks have to be true so and input date has to be lower or equal sorry lower or equal to end date so this means that this input date has to be in between the start date and end date so getting the uh, start and end date also. What is 
happening here. So we are providing to this function. This function actually is expecting start date that we are providing and end date that we are providing. So these are our expected. This is our expected range here. So we are using the control that is input field here. So the field that we are uh, actually changing, the user is changing and selecting the dates from that date picker there. So this is our control and our actual control value and the input date. So this is our input date. And now we are validating this input date and checking is it between the start date that we are expecting here and end date that we are expecting here. So if it's between these days, then we are returning null because we don't have any errors to return. If it's not, then we are going to return the next thing here. So if you like the video so far, please consider subscribing to my channel for more content like this. Thank you. Below this, I'm just going to return the check. So if valid, then return null, as we already said. Otherwise, we're just going to return an object here because we want to return a validation errors object. Okay. So this object will be like date out of range. Date out of range. And it will also have, sorry, a, yeah, date out of range here. And it is also an object that has mean date that is actually star date. Max date. That is actually end date in our case here. So what are these mean date, max date uh, here? So date out of range is our validation errors object. So it can be anything you name it, like here, date out of range or missing date or anything, anything you can add on your own key here. And also this, why am I adding this here? So we are checking if this exists in our template then we are uh, showing the errors and now into the errors i want to show to a user that min date and max date are these dates here that we are expecting so a user should know which dates are expected there so instead of adding them into the template from your con uh, component actually we are using it from this validator to show the uh, uh, expected dates. So start date and date is going to be uh, into this data out of range object there. So now we're going to implement this logic into our form. So I'll just remove this and hit save. So after I hit save, I'm going to use our form component. And here below the birth date, you'll find this form builder into the constructor here sorry then we're going to add another field so the another field is going to be starting date so starting date it is an array and now we are expecting this field to be our more required so validators required and next we are adding our date range validator that we created there the range validator and this validator is expecting two, uh, two parameters. So start date and end date, as we can see here in this validator function. So before we add it here, I'll add uh, today here. So that means that uh, like today is our starting day. So I'll create a new date object. Today equals new date. Okay. And it has to be like in our case here it can be anything you want or you can move this date to the specific range but just for the testing purposes here i'm adding the today and in the next 14 days so to add next 14 days or two weeks we have to add the one day in milliseconds so not seconds but milliseconds here so two weeks equals to one day in milliseconds is eight six four and five zeros one two three four five so this is a one day and then we have to multiply it by 14 because we want a 14 days so it's two weeks like this 
in milliseconds. And we have to end the end date max. Date max, that is actually our limit in this date range. So it is going to be a new date again. But this today get time. So we are getting a time in milliseconds. Then we are adding two weeks to that. So basically what we have here. So here we have this today in milliseconds and we have just a number like this one and a lot of numbers there. And we are just adding these two weeks also that is in milliseconds. So we are just summing up two numbers here. So that's why we can add it and why are we adding it like this. But in the end, we will get the date, date object that will have exact date that we are where we need here to, to provide to this date range validator function. Okay. Now let's continue. So here, the first parameter is going to be today, this today. And the second one is going to be and this and date max. So these are our required fields. Okay. And now we can see that we have date range validator and this today and, and date max. After doing this, uh, we have to implement into uh, this code into our uh, template here. So, okay, uh, from the bit. So we have form group here. I'll just copy this birth date here down below to paste it. But, uh, for now. okay, like this, and then. I'm just going to change the birth date everywhere. So it is going to be starting date. Starting date here and starting date is required he here. So for, uh, here the ID and control names should be also changed because I just copied this from the top. So that is going to be starting date. So that's the input control that we added here so starting date so we are using this starting date here and if it's touched and invalid we are going to show the errors and the first error here is starting date is required and the second is getting the starting date and now into this starting date errors we are checking for this starting date if it has an errors object inside that has here we have to add our our expected date out of range object so we're copying just date out of range and i'm just going to use as here to convert this to actually a, a property here to a variable actually here because I'm going to use this down below. So I'll just add the name date out of range here. So date out of range as date out of range. And now if we have date out of range error here, we'll have to say the following. This will show on the screen. So the date, date should be or be in a range from a date out of range, date out of range, that start date or what we added here, mean date and the max date. So mean date and also out of range again. Just add like this below. Indeed, out of range. Max date. Okay. Just have to remove this because the formatter is changed. Making errors. Okay. And we have the date out of range as date out of range. And now date should be in a range from date out of range mean date. As you remember, we mentioned here. 
So why, this is why we provided this uh, object here, min date and starting max date. To be able to get that data from the uh, errors object here so we are going to show this one and also sorry here uh, i will add something that is actually a date pipe here date and the date should be in a medium date Okay, I'll maybe just move this below. Okay, and the same pipe goes here. Okay, so now we have a, a message that shows a date should be in a range from uh, this date to this date here. We can hit save right now here, and we can go to our component to check this field so we have a starting date that is going to be like from today and in the next 14 days so if i click here an error appears here so this is expected so date should be in a range from september 29th to october 13th so let's select first of october and then we can see that there is no uh, error if i just change the year accidentally we'll get this. So if we change the month, we'll get this validation error. So this is expected behavior, and this is what does uh, what this uh, validator does actually. So this is it when it comes to this state range validator. I hope the value video was helpful to you and you enjoyed it watching this. If you like the video, please comment, share, and subscribe to my channel, and see you in the next one. Bye.